Hi, so uh, my name is Christopher Drum. Uh, I do um, Macintosh and iPhone develop a little over six years now. Uh, and I've uh, been transitioning my skills over to the iPhone platform. And I want to kind of talk to you today about a little bit about what it means to get something onto the iPhone and the iPad uh, platform. So first thing I wanted to kind of quickly show you was where the iPhone stands as far as sort of mobile devices goes. Um, right now it's got about a 14% market share in the states. Um, this is growing in various different, in various regions by different amounts every month, every year. Um, things of note on this are that the Android um, operating system has jumped from about 2% market share to 7% market share about six months. Um, so it took a lot of uh, palm in Microsoft market share, uh, market share almost overnight. Uh, but the iPhone does continue to grow. And it's grown up by, I think over the past six months, it's been up about a one and a half percent. So why would you even want to be on iPhone iPad platform? Uh, one, uh, if you're trying to make something unique for your customers, it has a very mature uh, kind of development process and a very mature development platform called Coco. Uh, this is what all Macintosh applications are built on. Uh, Apple sort of wisely leveraged that uh, knowledge base into their iPhone iPad platform. So kind of overnight, a lot of people suddenly became iPhone developers without even trying to become iPhone developers. Uh, and that gave them a really good head start on trying to get people to get their content onto the iPhone. Uh, between the iPhone, iPhone 3G, 3GS, iPod Touch, which is kind of the iPhone platform, so to speak. Uh, there's about 50 million iPhone users, 35 million iPod Touch users. That's, that's combined, that's a target audience for your content. So that's 85 million people using a device that is capable of reading your content. Uh, Additionally, overseas, we also see uh, market share growing. So for example, uh, in Japan, last year, it captured 72% of smartphone sales. For an overseas company to grab that kind of market share overnight in Japan is basically unheard of. BlackBerry has no presence there whatsoever outside of a few business pockets. Palm has no presence. Microsoft OS has no presence. So, that's not entirely true. Uh, but close enough for now. So, um, uh, uh, 1.7 million units were sold in the last fiscal year, uh, just totally eclipsing all of the competition. And basically, it's, it's taking off over there. So whatever growth we saw here in America, we we're seeing overseas as well. And then, of course, we have the iPad, using the same basic OS uh, layer. Uh, 450,000 units in its first four days, and a million sold in its first 28 days. It goes worldwide on Friday. Uh, so the big thing about the iPhone iPad platform is kind of touched upon by Robert earlier, which is that the App Store itself is kind of considered its killer app. It's sort of its reason for getting people excited about it. Because like you said, if you are on the toilet, you can buy it with just a single touch. And that's that's really, you're kind of constantly in your, in your uh, potential client's pocket at all times. On a whim, they can purchase. If I mention something to you right now, you say, oh, I like that, you can buy before I've even gone to the next slide. So that kind of instantaneous kind of spur of the moment, you know, you don't have to write it down. Remember that, so a lot of people consider Apple's App Store to be really kind of the, the, the big wow factor of the iPhone app, app platform. Saying that you want to sell your content on the iPad is not your idea for an iPad application. That's, that's, that's the kernel of an idea that's, that's, that could grow into an idea, but that in and of itself is not an idea for an application. It has no scope. We don't actually know what this would encompass. Is this a piece of software? Is it an ebook? What is it? Um, we don't actually really understand the, our destination. What are we building? And then there are other content publishing options on the iPad iPhone. So you say, oh, I want to, I'm going to make some app. Do you actually need an app? Would you be well served by the bookstore? Would, for example, there's a Kindle reader for the iPhone. 
if you sell your book through the Kindle store, you are on the iPhone. Does that meet your criteria for being on the iPhone? If it does, you've already got a path. You might not need to hire somebody to help you make a piece of software to, to, uh, get, on, to get onto the iPhone, per se. So, you know, as a developer coming from that side of things, like I want to be in the App Store, I want my own little application that people can buy through the App Store as a standalone application. This is kind of what you're looking at as far as the process of, you know, how to make something to sell. So in the beginning, we have basically requirements. What should the software do? We need to write how it should do those things. When I touch this button, it, it fades to this next screen. I click this, I get sound plays, I get a transition like this. All of this needs to be spelled out before we can <coughs> start to do uh, any sort of coding. We'll plan it out, and then we'll do what people really think of as being building the application, right? Which is making the art, making the sound, typing a bunch of zeros and ones, and making some code. And if that's what people, a lot of people think, this is what it takes. The top part and the bottom part are almost entirely ignored as far as their first thought about, I want to be on the iPhone. Testing is a huge part that's always forgotten, especially by uh, amateur developers and by people who are just kind of getting into this space for the first time. If you put out a bad application, you're, you have now sort of colored the opinion of your content in your customer's eyes. So if you're clicking things and it's not transitioning and it's doing this and it's not doing this, all that says is that you are kind of lazy about your own content and why would I want to pay for that, basically. There's, of course, the app source submission process. There's an 80-page document of specifications you have to adhere to before you even think about submitting it to the app store. Uh, once, it's, once you've made your submission, you're looking at about a three to six week uh, turnaround time for Apple to get up on the store if they approve it. The application approval process is a black box. It's a totally opaque process. Apple will not reveal anything about how they make these decisions. I've, I know people, and actually in the last uh, spoiler meeting, one of, our one of our presenters was talking about the sort of interactive fiction games that he's written. His applications were okayed on the iPhone. He had two of them okayed on the iPad. And his third one was rejected on the iPad. It was identical to everything else he had submitted, and they said that it was too similar to the web version. And so what they, what Apple really wants is, as far as they're concerned, you can build web apps. Go for it. If you're going to make applications for the iPhone iPad, they really want something that leverages the user experience and that the reasons people that look at an iPad and go, wow, this is amazing, they want your applications to take those ideas and not just regurgitate what was on the web. Of course, you then have your marketing uh, and then bug fixes and feature requests. And once you've once you've actually put your application out, people are going to have things that have, that they've found about it. You can't just put it up and let it rot per se, you know, any more than you would want any of your creative content to do that. So you do have there's this sort of maintenance process that's kind of forgotten about. So it kind of breaks down those general categories. So then there's this kind of also this concept of a developer versus a programmer. And depending on what you're doing, you might need one or the other. So the kind of key takeaway here is that programmers need a roadmap of what they are building. Um, if you say, okay, I want to tie in something with my, um, with my short film that I've built. I want some sort of tie-in application. Well, what does that mean? Does that mean like, a, like some sort of an interactive novella? Is it a game? Is there extra bonus video content? What, you know, this is such a broad concept. Well, what are you talking about? Well, okay, I guess like a game. Well, what kind of game do you want? A role play game, a puzzle, an action, or choose your adventure? I guess I want a role play game. Well, what style of role play game? And should it be single multiplayer? And what kind of uh, art flavor should it have? Is it Eastern or Western? Oh, it's Eastern. Oh, well, do you mean East like New York? Do you mean East like <laughs> So the things that seem sort of obvious to you because you understand your content so well have to be absolutely explicitly written out for a programmer. He will do exactly what you tell.